Sledeće predavanje je zažačen na srđan vranac koji radi u kompaniji Code for Hire, bavi se već dugo godina PHP programiranjem, Python programiranjem, voli distribuirane sisteme, skalabilne sisteme. On danas neće biti sa nama na pozornici ovde, ali će svakako podeliti sa vama svoje znanje, imat ćete priliku da ga čujete. Tako da, mislim da možemo da krenemo sad. Testirali smo prezentaciju, to sve ide kako treba. Probat ćemo da testiramo i neke nove metode interaktivne tehnologije live prezentovanja. Tako da, srđene, ako nas čuješ, možeš da kreneš. Hvala. Drago mi je da sam ovdje prvi put, nadam se da će biti sve svoje. Kao što je Milan rekao, English all the way. Ovo govorim zato što ovo prezentacije, ovo predavanje, radim po konferencijama po svetu, tako da će biti na engleskom. Nadam se da neće puno brundati, ali ajde da provo. Ok, so, welcome to the DVD talk. First, let's get the essentials out of the way. Who am I? My name is Sergeant Ranac. I was introduced to a business owner, developer, consultant, mercenary. I write terrible code that performs exceptionally. I'm writing elephants and pythons on a daily basis. I'm interested in continuous integration, delivery, testing, best practices, and distributed systems. Word of warning. Uh, I'm partial to using messages, as I do believe that they can drive uh, the message harder into your brain and I also do not have a lot of code on my slides. As we are speaking about distributed systems, the speaker, me, may or may not exhibit various conditions with words, lag in thoughts, and occasional segfault or OM. This is not a result of stage fright or poor preparedness. This is a carefully choreographed act that should not be tried at home. So, welcome to the DVD talk. No, not that kind of DDD. Today, we are talking about distributed domain destruction. So, before we begin, uh, we need to define what is a distributed system. The simple definition is that it is a system where you can distribute uh, processing of costly tasks to other workers. By costly tasks, I mean anything uh, ranging from heavy computation and CPU utilization to long-running processes. If we are talking about the uh, context of uh, web applications, basically anything that, uh, is done, that can't be done within a uh, request is a candidate for distribution or background process. Uh, you have uh, one set of workers getting the HTML, another set of workers parsing it up and you, they update the database, and yet another set of workers to create a screenshot from the URL. Uh, you add some publishing scripts to the mix and the ones that start the whole thing. And the message broker will have to like rabbit in queue. And this is great because you split things up like this and you can scale as much as you need or as much as your client wallet allows or heaven forbid your own. Congratulations, you are now disturbed. Um, I mean distributed. So, now that you can scale, you go to your clients or your CTO or whoever's in charge and you lay out, lay out your plan. Uh, you want some thousand workers or so spread across 20 instances uh, that would be some 50 workers per uh, worker processes for instance, meaning that you can get cheaper machines, bring the cost down and bring uh, and tie it up with, with, with a message broker and add some uh, ready skill cash and etc etc and you lay it out and you lay it on and you're happy and you're just ecstatic and then you see it. You see the moment when you lost it. The next part of the conversation goes something along the lines of so why don't we get bigger instances that can use say 500 workers for instance uh, that way we have less hassle and it might be cheaper as we have less overhead. In order for your distributed system to work, you need to keep your workers running and they will exit or, or time out uh, because no jobs available or some exception. Uh, your workers need to be kept, kept running constantly 
So we have to use demons to keep an eye on them and start them in the number of instances that we need. Most popular would be supervisor and upstart, which is basically canonical uh, stake on, on, uh, on supervisor. And it was integrated in Ubuntu, now it's changed. Both are well documented, both are straightforward to use, and of course, both are just waiting to bite you in the ass. Supervisor is older, it's more mature, it's easy to set up, batteries are included, as everything in Python works fine, until you need to run more than, say, 350 workers at any given time, and then in our case, we need 500. What happens then is that supervisor will try to run them all and keep crashing them, and eventually it will stop responding. It's beautiful. Um, my guess is that it depends on the version of Python and how it's compiled, and what is the limit on the file descriptor set. Both edge cases have been reported on the respective issue trackers. Uh, last time I checked, there was no identity fix. Make no mistake. Sooner or later, you will be looking like this and using Deems. Now, on to something more serious. Logging and counting. And I mean log and count everything. In a normal application, it is nice to have, or it is important, as it is one of the tools that will tell you what is going on. In distributed systems, on the other hand, the logging is basically essential because that is about the only way uh, that you can find out what went wrong and maybe it will show you how it went wrong. And when I say log, I mean log and count, not only by outputting the information um, from your application to the files and counting everything, and then you grab them and then you can see how many counters at any given point in uh, your application have been incremented. So all of a sudden, if a counter drops, you know that something is happening and you can take steps to fix it. Or at least they will try to. They don't do it on purpose. It is just that sometimes you will encounter a piece of code that you will look on the surface, um, give an analysis, it will look okay, but then you put it in production and all hell breaks loose. One application we developed uh, was using DynamoDB as one of the backends, and yes, you heard it right, multiple backends. So, what is DynamoDB? Another crash course. Uh, well, it is Amazon's take on document or NoSQL database. It is built with speed and scale in mind, and by setting proper throughput on reads and writes, you're being charged the money. The more speed you need, the more money you spend. That being said, after two years of using it, I believe it is a prime example of everything that is wrong with NoSQL databases. And this is coming from someone who has cursory knowledge of database systems. Back to the story. Um, the application in question uh, processes about 4 million items multiple times per day. So it is quite normal to have 2 or 3 runs per day. When you do the math, that means at least 10, 10 million records a day. The data is stored in temporal tables. And that means that every day there is a different table getting data out of that is a separate world of pain, of no concern for this, as per Amazon's best practices. On the screen, now you see a screenshot of uh, DynamoDB constructor for PHP from their manual. And you can see that the constructor is basically a configuration array that, there, that takes a crap load of options for this and that. And less, unless you are, are careful either, it is easy to miss it. Because apparently at Amazon nobody knows how to load text. Down at the very bottom, uh, there is a key called error, to which you can actually pass a call that will be called in case of an error, and then the exception of, you will get the exception of what has happened. So, let me say this again. What is happening? By default and by design, when an error happens, the batch writer will ignore it, drop the payload, and continue on, giving you a false positive, which in turn will cause four days worth of data to be lost. Lovely. If, on the other hand, you register your callable, uh, you will get an exception as an argument that does not tell you much. 
and the pipe, by the time you get the exception, the payload has already been lost, and you are basically left there putting your pumps thinking happy, happy thoughts. Fine. I mean, now I have the error record in place, error handler in place, and now I can see what is happening. And then I'm starting to basically lose my mind. Um, the problem is that the problem in 60% of the cases actually boils down to the following typecasting. DynamoDB needs to have its data typed, and it only has primitive types like numbers, string, or text, and such. And ultimately, it is stored uh, in the payload, and ultimately, the payload is JSON. If you, so, one day, one of the system stops. And I mean, we're not talking, hey, it's not processing, like, workers are not running, I mean, like, that's done. After SSH again, uh, in the terminal, it is always molasses. Turns out there is no disk space left on a drive of like 100 gigabits. The usual suspects came nothing, so I decided to look into the logs, and lo and behold, there is a log file of 80 plus gigabytes just sitting there. And I mean, there is literally zero bytes left on the drive. That means I can't open the log, I can't get it, I can't do anything. Only thing that I can actually do is delete it and things go back to normal. I monitor it like a couple more days, nothing happens. And I move along, almost forgetting that it happened. Months, months by, and again the system starts same room. Log in, check the logs, this time different log file, again you can't do anything, delete it, monitor it, nothing, move along. Again, I almost forgot that incident happened, and then it stuck, struck again. And then I decided no more. I'm going to make this app great again, and I'm going to get the client to actually pay for it. I'm getting to the bottom of this. Again, this is full, one huge log file, I delete it, the system recovers, but this time I decide to pick up all the archived log files and transfer them to my machine so I can actually analyze them. I pick one up. For the worker that uh, created the mess, unpack it, and I basically break my machine. I aborted when it moved to over 50 megabytes of data. I pick another one, which looks smaller, some like 100 megabytes in, unpack it, and then 26 megabytes of text file need. So now I have some evidence of what might be happening, and the log in this size, of this size is, I mean, not too far. I open it, and 99.99% .99 of this log is one line repeated over and over. Now uh, I can pinpoint the problem and it is basically a mother of edge cases. For reasons I can't talk about, we were using shared memory at SendForce and some arrays under certain conditions, uh, the index in those arrays would break out of bounds and it would never be reset. The log gets just nice wording in the out of bounds message thanks to PHP, which does not treat this as an error, just a wording and by the time we caught it, it was too late. Again, no unit tests, no metrics in this segment of the system. Suffice to say that it is changed now. Three lines of code to fix, a couple of grand of revenue loss. This was documented exactly nowhere and nobody noticed it until crunch time. I mean, live and learn and document. When you work with distributed systems, Client expects you to scale them up quickly. Unfortunately, sometimes that is not the case. In our case, the problem was the technical decision that files that need to be processed are stored locally. They worked okay for a while, but as more items needed to be processed, the thing started bursting out of the seams. Yes, we had a couple of hundred of gigabytes of space at disposal, but when one of those one of the clients asked the right question, we discovered extra data that can be processed, things get out of hand. Quickly. The workload was so great, you could not use only one instance, we needed more workers, and we couldn't do it. The reason why? Local storage of files. And this is a common mistake. If you start working with things like messages and using them in sentences like messages, distributed, and such, you can't lose, use the word local for anything ever again. 
Um, it was a lovely chat with a client when I had to explain why things are slow and what can be done about it, but it went rather well. I managed to make the changes to the files that they are now stored on S3, tested and deployed within a week, and I need to make sure that the changes will not make, break anything. In the last day before deployment, I noticed that time of the process to time need, needed to process one item uh, was again slow. And the reason is the data was being downloaded to a local hard drive and then passed to a WKHTML2 image, which would then generate the image and save it as a file, which would then be uploaded to S3 for final storage. So again, in case you are bored and not paying attention, I was basically trashing the local drive, and that is why it was slow. First investigation showed very little promise, um, as the WKHTML did not support the streams, but that was true for the version that we were using, and in the recently re released one, the uh, feature was there, but it was kind of semi-documented. A few hours later, we had the changes implemented, and the deploy was done in the morning. The system worked beautifully, catching up on the workload, and even that memory generation saved quite a bit of taxing on the resources of the systems. We, it turned out that we can actually run twice as fast as before the changes. To fix this, I needed to add one S one letter S in two config files and be on my very, very way. 18 hours spent on this chase. 20 seconds to fix. Fun stuff. Now, again, another story. Um, we built a back office system for the client and in total there is about 300 people using it. Um, amongst other things, it does warehousing and packaging. And one fine morning, Eastern Seaboard time, Seaboard time, pardon, as things were starting to pick up and people are arriving to work, we started getting reports that the website and the application is going down. And I'm noticing basically like slow down across the systems and workers as well. Um, partners in the company and in, in the team are looking into the logs and they're seeing, seeing a lot of failed database requests. I'm scrambling to the database, um, listing the process. There are quite a few of them that are waiting and quite a few of them that are old. And the new ones are coming in. I mean, the database server is not a small one. It is a R3 for X large, which means it which means it has like 16 CPUs and 120 plus gigabytes of RAM. Uh, the web is starting to slow and systems are starting to slow and we need to do, do something before we go down like the Titanic. I start killing all the, all the scores in the base, database. Um, I see things are improving, but there is like unoptimized unbounded query possibility and I'm killing the queries, queries new, new ones are coming in and amongst them are the same ones that I just killed. And as I'm playing whack a with, uh, with queries, the team is trying to determine uh, from which part of the database the system or where they actually came from. The database is again going down and we need to do something before it completely falls apart and we lose the job. We identify that the query is coming from the warehouse so we decided just to kill the web server and make sure that everybody times out for 30 seconds. I mean, it is a nasty solution, but that's where times. And so we did. And after that, things are back to normal. And I mean, as if nothing happened. And people continue working normally, making money. The right person for the job. If, on the other case, you think this is awesome and fun and you should enjoy it, then this field is ready for you. This is basically my story, and if you can switch to the last slide, press space. Thank you. Any questions? Pitanje je znači da li smo koristili nešto za agregiranje logova, stat di je prikupio lokalno i onda smo stali na data log koji nam se pokazao jako dobro, pošto ima jako duboku integraciju sa AVS-om, tako da smo na njemu praktično gledali šta se dešava, dok smo, recimo, kod klijenta imali 5 52-inča monitora televizora koji su imali dashboardove na sebi, tako da u bilo kom momentu su oni znali šta se dešava. 
po prirodi posla i zahvaljujući Amazonu gomila stvari koja se lomila se obično dešavala između 6. jutru po našem vremenu i 12. Znači, tamo kada bi oni dolazili na posao, stvari su uvek se raspadove. Amazon je čudo. A opet su stajali na lokalnim mašinama, zato su se prepunjevali? Ne, svi logovi su korišteni Datadog agent. Inaš Datadog agent koji koristi StatsD, ti šalješ svoje informacije na Datadog agent, Datadog agent agregira to koliko smatra da je u 50-15 sekundi i onda to šalje na Datadog direktno. Znači to je što se tiče metrika, to ide na Datadog. Ovo što smo mi imali sa logovima, ovo je problem sa PHP-om koji upozorenja tipa index out of bounds, tetira greške, tetira kao upozorenje, umesto kao exception. I umesto tebi da se raspadne skript, odnosno komad koda koji radi, on ga samo zapiše u log i nastavi dalje. Cool, još neko pitanje? Imam ja jedno pitanje, malo povezano i sa verovatno pričom koji će mainstream, da pričam moguće čak i frame. Kako je kod vas konkretno u vašem slučaju izgledao proces odlučivanja kad jedan sistem treba da se skalira i ok, može da koristi mnogo resursa ili malo opet delimično izrazio se da li tako je kod organizovanih koje resurse koristi, pogotovo u distribuiranim sistemima. Kako je teko proces odločivanja, šta i kako treba da se radi, koliko resursa je dozvoljeno, koliko će to da košta, šta je uloga developera, šta je uloga klijenta, šta je uloga biznisa osoba? Prvi put kada smo skalirali, počeli da smo da koristimo Girmana. A Girman je sličan message broker starije generacije koji ne radi baš najbolje ako ga ne potresiš da koristi MySQL i bazu kao backend, znači da se ne slađe sve. Što nam se dovolilo u situaciju da smo imali instancu koja nije stala da se resetuje ikad. To nas je opet dovolilo do problema da nismo mogli da se skaliramo jer ne možeš ga distribuirati na više instanci, bak ne lako. I u jednom momentu je bilo šta ćemo, kako ćemo, klijentu sam rekao bukvalno ovom videu, ako sad ćeš ili da mi veruješ, ili ću ja sad da napustim, ne ja, nego ceo tim napuštamo projekat, mene sada neće biti dve nedelje, jer kad se vratimo, ovo će biti rešeno. Može, može. Dve nedelje mi je trebalo da uradim igraciju na RabbitMQ i da dignem jednu instancu. Posle toga smo mi završili sa situacijom da smo od 50% ispod onoga što nam je trebalo, sa tim skrenim i tom promenom imali performanse povešanja tipa 300% i posle toga sam ja bepunimo kad pa šta god smatram da treba, da mogu. Ali opet ovo je ekstremna situacija koju ne priporučuje nikome. Ja sam i u poziciji da kažem ovo sada ovako, a vi vidite šta ćete. U ovom poslu često je bolje kako se, kako ono ide? It's better to ask for forgiveness than for allowance. Znači, uletite i uradite šta mislite da treba. U najgodnom slučaju će vam reći da to ne valja i šta? Reći će vam da neće više uraditi sa vama. Pa šta? Ako ste vi imali ideju koja donosi vrednost, koja pokušava da spasa projekat, da smanji troškove, a oni koji su iznad vas to ne vide iz nekih svojih razloga, često zato što na kraju dana gledaju samo ono bottom line, znači koliko to košta, na kratkom, na kratkom roku, to možda nije projekat ekipa sa kojom želite raditi. Hvala. Jer imamo još neko pitanje? Ok, hvala puno srđane.